You know, I don't want to see any comments in the comment section below calling me out for being that guy, quote unquote, who talks about the Vancouver Canucks and the playoffs and this and that and the other thing and goes back on his word like two days later. That's not what I want to see in the comment section, you know, which I know it's going to cause people to talk about in the comment section like this, but hey, I've said it the entire time in the live streams and everything. The Vancouver Canucks realistically do have a chance at making the playoffs. It's possible, but the way everything has come about where they have come back from the illness, they've reset themselves with a schedule of 19 games in 32 days, and they have back-to-backs, and they have guys who aren't back yet. You have players taken out of the lineup. You have AHL-caliber guys just waltzing in there doing their thing. And you have a team that really is not in the best shape that it could be. They're still missing their best player. They're still missing some of their best defenders. And a lot of their depth is gone, depleted with players that honestly just really didn't look good tonight. Whether or not the Vancouver Canucks make the playoffs, or if they lose every single game from here on out, it's fine. The fact that they're actually going out there and battling in itself is a victory. Which is why the Vancouver Canucks losing 3 to nothing to the Ottawa Senators today doesn't really hurt me as much as it could. What is up, you are the Washington Vlogs back here, and today's video is talking about that game. Oh boy, they really came back down to earth, didn't they? Against Toronto, the two games they played there, they looked electric, they had offense, they had a lot of things going well for them out there on the ice, a lot of conversions, sure, they played some pretty meh goaltending in Jack Campbell in overtime, etc., and in David Riddick especially, but... It seems like everything that was good that was happening to Vancouver in those previous two games just did not come true here today against the Ottawa Senators. Firstly, the team kind of looked a lot worse. Yeah, not even getting into the actual results of the game. Jimmy Vesey, man, that guy didn't have a great game. Boyd, ah, uh, he didn't look good either. Yet Highmore and McAllis and Howerluck, yeah, these guys... Oh boy, I hate to say it, but dude... When Jason Bruff posted on Twitter that Jimmy Vc would go into the I don't want him pile, you had yourselves a reply here that kind of really made itself known in my mind as being something that I kind of relate with. The Sea of Grenland is back, baby. Vc, Boyd, Howerluck, Highmore, McAllis might as well be the same guy. You know what? Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. The inefficiencies of the Michael Chaput's and the Jason Megna's and the Leipzig's, the Archibald's, the Spooners. You know, it's kind of like we were seeing those guys out there in the lineup tonight, wasn't it? Like, for some reason, when I watched this Vancouver Canucks team tonight, when Brandon Sutter had the puck on his stick and he did things, in my mind there was a very clear distinction between Brandon Sutter, who gets all the criticism in the world, and the VCs, and the Boyds, and the Howerlux, who just could not do anything. Now, I don't want to make it seem like our bottom six lost us the game. Believe me, when you get shut out here by Matt Murray and the Ottawa Senators, it's not just the bottom six who loses you the game, it's everything else around that. The Canucks tonight honestly just did not have that same cohesion that they did against Toronto. Quinn Hughes bobbling the puck here and there, Miller and Besser losing their passes and not getting great opportunities. This just wasn't a good game, and that in itself is the conclusion. I don't even want to go out there and blame the refs. Sure, the Vancouver Canucks could have had a few more power plays, but the ones they did have, they were 0 for 4. And the Senators had a lot more offensive zone time shorthanded than I would have liked to see. And the refereeing certainly wasn't the best, I would say. Things started off with a Travis Hamannick, Brady Kachuk fight where Hamannick got the instigator penalty and it really didn't look all too convincing in my opinion, but hey, it is what it is. The Canucks started this one off with a power play where Shane Pinto, brand new out of the NCAA, North Dakota man wasn't gunning for the quota, he gets himself almost a shorthanded breakaway. And at this point, I'm like, okay, if this is what our power play is going to look like, the entire rest of the night, then yeah, it's chalked. We're not going to get anything done here. And spoiler alert, the Canucks power play didn't get anything done tonight. Meanwhile, the Ottawa Senators and their power plays, hey, they start things off really nicely. Stutzla, with a tip out in front, he scores. It's 1-0 Ottawa. That's not Demko's fault. It's not. It goes off the guy's shin pad in front. 
on a very long shot and it gets deflected at a wide end. It's weird. It's in. It's one nothing Ottawa. The rest of the first period, though, from that point on, Canucks honestly look pretty good. Good puck movement in the offensive zone, no goals, though, and the Canucks end up going to the box again. Becomes 2-0 Ottawa when Drake Batherson gets the chance out in front. It was a weird pass, a weird centering cross crease that goes off the skate of Tyler Myers that slows the entire play down and it clogs up Thatcher Demko and his movement. I believe if that puck went straight to Batherson without the Myers interception in front, it probably would have been a save by Demko, but because there was that interference, it kind of messed everything up. It's 2-0 Ottawa after the first period. The second period starts off, and hey, guess what? It's Travis Boyd on the power play. He sends it back to Tyler Myers after a senator comes off the bench, and there's a 2-on-1 that ensues afterwards. The rest of the period was really weird. For the first half of the second, the Canucks look really bad. Not a lot of cohesion, a lot of inaccurate passes. Jimmy VC I had noted as a very particular one who had a bad period. Lots of missed passes and broken plays. But then the Canucks get another power play halfway through the game, and they look a lot better. Lots of shots, lots of pressure. They get themselves what is a very good third quarter of the period with high volume and high intensity. But in the fourth quarter, after playing really well, they look a lot worse. Way too much pressure for the Ottawa Senators. The momentum was shifting back and forth in this one. And I'm thinking at this point, at the end of the second period, you know, this is the infected Vancouver Canucks right here that people thought we would see against Toronto. That people thought would get absolutely smoked by the Maple Leafs. This is a team that's not making their passing count. That's not making their shots count. They can't get anything past Matt Murray. And they're not even looking good most of the time time when they're trying. They're giving it up like crazy, and it's not going to sustain if they go forward in the third period with the same attitude. And you know what? The third period started off with two incredible Ottawa Senator rushes in the first minute that could have been goals. The Canucks end up getting another power play because, of course, they do. The referees try to make up for what they missed earlier on in the game, and the Canucks just can't hit the net. It's not working. The best chance, though, comes with a few minutes left where the Highmore line of all lines, plus... Tyler Myers and Nate Schmidt get a really good shift with lots of shots, all blocked by the Senators or saved by Matt Murray. We had ourselves a great stretch pass by Ole Olevi that sprung Howerluck for a semi-breakaway sort of thing, where he got stopped as he took a slap shot. Okay. The Canucks then end things off going on the empty net, trying to break through the consistent and aggressive Ottawa defense, but the Canucks were just really sloppy with their 6-on-5 play, kind of getting a few shades of that Vancouver-Toronto game as the Senators keep on icing the puck trying to go for the empty net. Thomas Shabbat eventually goes off the post from a long-distance shot. That one was honestly kind of funny, but eventually it's Connor Brown who seals the deal. 3-0 Ottawa is your final score here. The shot's on goal. Matt Murray makes 31 saves on 31 shots. Demko lets in two on 24 shots on goal that are against a goaltender. There are 25 shots because the empty net ends up going in, and that's a shot on goal. But yeah, really not the best game for Vancouver. They're starting to come down back to earth after what was a very bad goaltending performance they went up against in Toronto both nights. And this time, you know, Thatcher Demko, I mean, he let in two, but still, the team didn't score anything. I think at this point, when you think about the Elias Pedersons and the Tyler Motts and the guys who aren't playing, you think more so about the consistent high level of play that these guys are able to provide. Not saying that Tyler Mott is a game changer, 100% best player in the league kind of thing, no. But still, when Tyler Mott is out there, he's playing with Brandon Sutter, who's honestly not terrible compared to the rest of the players in our lineup, you can see a clear difference when Mott and Sutter are cycling it compared to when VC and Boyd are giving it up on the boards. It makes me really wonder just the skill gap between everybody on the team, and you know, it's something that I even noticed earlier on against Toronto. Like, when Breezebois and Chatfield were making plays, you could really see the differences in the quality of these decisions made by these guys compared to the vets like the Edlers and the Tanevs and, heck, even the Quinn Hughes. At the end of the day, though, hey, the Senators have come back. They're starting to get their mojo on. They lost a whole bunch of games earlier on in the season, but hey, they're back in here getting themselves a shutout victory against Vancouver. It's, what, their second shutout after shutting out Montreal earlier on in the season as well? They've won three in a row now, so that's really good for the Ottawa Senators. They're also now one point back of Vancouver, but of course, they have seven more games played, so that playoff race getting a little bit tighter, but... 
it is what it is. Vancouver comes out here, loses to Ottawa 3 0. Talk to me in the comments if you thought about this game, if you enjoyed this. Rolls 9 9. And bye.